Hey, what's up guys? Back for a couple more games here today. Uh, this time they're both going to be in the Sheridan. And if you follow me on Twitter, uh, I posted a couple of games. Uh, I've had some really good games in this tank lately. Unfortunately, the second game is kind of a fallback game. The second game I wanted to feature was another game on proc. That was about 4,000 damage, about 9,000 assist. But the video aired out on me and I can't seem to recover it. I can't even get a Twitch highlight of it. It's apparently just gone forever, so it's kind of unfortunate. But we live and let it learn and just move on. So this first game is fantastic in itself, and I arguably it's almost better than that game. So you're certainly going to get quite the game on proc here. But the other one would have been nice because it was from the other spawn as well. So you're going to see something that I like to do on proc from this spawn right off the bat. And that's I go straight at the middle and then turn it left over the train tracks. And usually I light up a good amount of tanks, like, in that area. Usually I like to avoid hitting all these buildings. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was doing here, to be honest. Usually I like to go right down, there's like a road in the middle of the town, and you can go right down that route, and you don't, like, blow any buildings up or anything like that. But it lets you spot most of their tanks in the field, and it lets you spot them crossing to the hill, too, if you make it quick enough. And even get some shots into them in the side if you have a good enough crew and you're not going to get spotted because you're about 400 meters out or so. And you see we're able to get some shots into this T-30 who's trying to get to the hill. Now he disappears so we have to move up a little bit and you see we're starting to light up some other tanks on the railroad tracks back there. So it's also good for spotting those campers. Unfortunately we get spotted there. I don't know if that was actually the Patton. I know the Patton has good view range. But we were at about 420 uh, meters view range there. So, I don't know if that's really him or not, or it may have been this uh, Iron Rain back here with Bino set up. So, again, it's a great early damage kind of uh, position to do that. It's like, because especially if you're platooned with somebody who's like an artillery or something like that, if you're really that person, uh, you can kind of coordinate ahead of time and say you're going to spot them going up the hill and they can pre-aim. And you can usually get some, hopefully, a good shot. Uh, damage into them crossing up if you coordinate well enough and once I do that once that is initially over then I'd like to make my way to the hill from this spawn and then just casually snapshot some heavy tanks in the field but no, seriously <laughs> um, I I prefer almost now especially if I have gun depression even in my light tanks occasionally from this uh, this spawn is I like to work this this hill because usually, especially if their heavies are positioned where they're at right there, I can spot them, but I can also put shots into them, and I can also use these bushes to stay hidden from the guys in front of me while also spotting them. So it's a good combination of extending view, view range into two key uh, positions on the map, which is the hill and that side of the field as well. Because something they'll do from their side, from the, if you don't light them up there, they can get side shots into all these heavies without getting spotted occasionally. So, I know that because I've done it. I mean, I, it's something I do. So, I always like to try to counter what I think is possible for the enemy team to do as well. But, again, once I know my options are kind of limited and I've used up that time there, I'm going to reposition and just make sure I keep the gun going because... Why, the, it's good to take the hill. You don't want to put all your tanks on the hill because it's very easy to get bogged down Just because it's ex, it's really exposed as soon as you start pushing and if you just leave the field pretty open It's fairly easy for you to find yourself distracted and you'll see that in a future replay that kind of happens that I'm gonna put up So you kind of want to avoid that and you see it's kind of happening here even we're already down one to six for a moment and then we're able to take out an E3, but you can see all the shots coming in from our side, their side. It's just a lot of tanks taking hits at this point. It's kind of a war of attrition. So at that point, I take out a couple of their tanks on the railroad tracks, and I feel fairly safe here to where I can start moving down and taking out some of their low health vehicles over here. It, it helps when their tanks just sit out in the open and just let me kill them. Uh, it's, I really do appreciate it. But, um, 
I believe that T30 was the last tank on the hill. Again, I feature I really wish they would bring the console. And you may even see me switch mini maps if they do, which and that'd be the last new positioning of the enemy tanks. If they brought that to console, I would easily switch to something else, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. And now we're just able to use our gun depression and we're not gonna take a hit from this iron rain. Just barely poke out and as soon as he keeps backing up, we're just gonna take him out real quick. So here I'm a little worried about artillery or there's something to sit in here. And sure enough, we spot the arty. That's a really unusual position. He just, I guess, didn't move. Usually they go either to the back corner or they're right by the railroad tracks right here. So it's good for us. Makes it easy. Fortunately, we get spotted when we kill him. But it's not the end of the world. It's kind of figured. Take out the artillery for that price. Now here I make sure to make sure I, uh, I make sure to make sure. Fantastic. Uh, to get unspotted before I poke out and hopefully take out a couple of these guys that are all on low health. Now here's a shot that I really, really wish I had back. I really wish I had that shot back. And you'll see why later in this game. As you notice, we're already up to six kills. Or maybe I could have even shot the STI there. I really wish I would have had one of those two shots back. And that's just me being Mr. Perfectionist and regretting a game that, as you can see, it very quickly turned into one really good game with already 5,000 damage and 2,200 assists. So now I see that all I have left is a friendly, I think, 50B. And real quick though, here's a really key important, I don't go in the cap circle right here. And that's just to let them know they still think I may be back on the railroad tracks. But that's, I know I'm getting capped right now. So I want to make my uh, make my way all over around and use the bushes on this side, because I know in the middle there's that full health E3, and then I don't really know where the T54 was at, but I'm pretty sure he's by the our side of the railroad tracks. Yep, and there he is. He's over by our 50B. So I want to avoid him. He's really my main threat at this point because of his mobility. And so instead, we're gonna. Basically, it lets us know that what's on the cap is the ISM. He's going to have a hard time kind of seeing, uh, spotting us. But I'm going to load the heat rounds anyway because I don't want to bounce. Even though, as you'll see here in a second, that's not really going to help us. Now, he actually has enough of, uh, I guess, intuition to know that there's no way he couldn't have spotted me if I had gone under the railroad tracks so as soon as he gets lit up he actually starts facing this way which is a good play by him I'll be completely honest so it's a good play by him and it's kind of annoying to me because now I'm guessing he's pinging the map so the E3 is coming this way too so they're actually kind of working together and this ISM is just really an annoying uh, target right now it doesn't help that the Sheridan's gun is not the best, and we finally get spotted. I think that was more by the E3, because E3 is crushing the hill at that point. And honestly, it, I was just hoping they'd reset the cap, so the first shot that just damaged his tracks was fine with me. And I'm not that worried about ammo, because I know he's about a two-shot, and the E3 is also about a two-shot. The only thing I didn't know at this point was what the T-54 was on health-wise. So he was the only one I was a little worried about, because if he was on full health, I was going to have some issues. Now that one I was a little surprised balanced, but I think he just barely angled enough. And you'll see, it's just really hard to... I, I guess I should have been going for the lower plate the entire time, because even when he angles, that still goes through. If somebody... Ca I can't remember exactly what the heat rounds are on this thing. Not, f I don't think they're fantastic. Now here's a little risky. I know the E3 went down in the Depression. Unfortunately, that doesn't take him out, but I know the E3 is probably about ready to peak, especially when I see the tree knock down, but it's actually the T-54. So he's going to put one shot into me, damage and ammo rack. So good thing we saw our tracks, but we're going to just hit the brakes and have him fly by us. He's not going to be very happy about that. Uh, he's going to send some want some good hate mail saying I should move out of my mother's basement, which is quite hilarious. But it's good for him. I guess he wants to vent a little. It's all right. But at this point, I'm not that worried. I don't know how the ISM really doesn't shoot me here. I stop, basically. So then he misses while I'm moving. I, I don't know. The only thing I have with this is... 
I kind of misjudged his reload. I do take a shot here. That could have been risky. I'm running cola, so I could have presumably burnt out. So a little bit of a misplay at the end, but overall, a really, really good game. Came down 1v3 and was able to keep it kind of cool-headed and just kind of focus the right targets at the right time and we end up with nine kills. So you see why I wanted that shot back on the Conqueror. Because that would have secured, my, I think, my first ever Tier 10 Pools medal. And it would have been really nice to have, but I can't complain when you do 7,400 damage and about, I think it was 2,000 assists with 9 kills. And you win a 1v3 and you get a hate mail. I think it's just a good day of tanking when you can secure that kind of result. And there's, well no, sorry. But we also got, I think, 3 other messages that were all GG's. Um, from teammates, and I think maybe even one from the other team. But overall, a really fun game. Again, I wish for the second game, it could have been the other one. But this is another good game. Still a very good result. But this is more of a fallback game, which makes it sound bad. Because it's still going to be a pretty monster damage game for a light tank. But I really wanted to show you guys that Sheridan game. Because it was just, it was about, like I said, it was like 13,000 damage combined. Which is really, really good. Um... I've had some other really good games in this thing lately. Like, I think I recently did about 7,500 damage in it on Abby. And I thought about showing you all that one, but at the end, it just wasn't up to my standards, which... And I'm also kind of limited on replay space at the moment, so... That game, I really wish I could have won also, but I got a little some... A little bit of bad RNG, and I made some bad mistakes in that game as well. And if you're in the stream for that, you'll know what I'm talking about. But let's get into this one. Now we come up to the hill here, which is a little different than what I usually do on Westfield. And that's because it's Assault. So we only have about 10 minutes in this game. Just keep that in mind also. So normally on normal Westfield, I'd spot the middle area. Uh, across the valley. But here... I'm spotting up here first because I know they kind of spawn a little closer to that and well we spawn a little bit closer to that so I know I can get up to the top first and possibly get some shots into them before they reach the hill but as you see they don't really come up to the top but we're still able to put a shot into their T100 which is a good result it's definitely the biggest issue for us as you see their team is mostly heavy tanks which is beautiful for us I mean that's just an absolute dream for Westfield for me there's only one medium and one light, so I'm going to have the view range advantage throughout this. The only thing I that was annoying this game, and that was the gun. Again, at this kind of range, I can't really like be surprised about it. And so far, it doesn't look like it's been that bad, but you'll see some shots later that just kind of baffled me. Like that one's, for example, actually. The side of an M103 turret, and it just goes into, like, I don't know, just nowhere. So, again, but we're at almost 500 meters here, and again, these light tanks, the tier 10, don't have the best accuracy. The best one being the tier 10 German, and that's still 0.35, I think, which isn't exactly what you want for these long-range uh, kind of shots. But even so, I mean, it is what it is. Now, I really wish, I don't know. These guys cross right in front of three teammates, and they barely get shot. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. They get some good damage into them. And I think we're able to shut down the M103. No, because, yeah, there we go. I think we led that one a little too much, just in a little bit. And it hits the front of his tank, and he is able to survive on, like, 40 hit points. Again, I don't like wasting ammo, because, for me, I know I can potentially use it all. Especially on a map like this. Uh, on Westfield, I know there's a potential always for me to have to use a lot of ammo. And I'm fine with that. But it just means I get a little annoyed when shots that should pen and should hit miss. But that's just the nature of the beast with RNG. You have to deal with it. So now I'm moving up a little further because like I said, their view range isn't that great compared to mine. And now here I'm holding my shot because I know there's a Yag over there. I see him fire. And... The ISM and company are only about 250 meters away from me to my left. So I'm kind of avoiding it. But I think here I actually take the risk very soon. I pull back to get behind the bushes. It's still not quite hidden. But I think I'm enough behind the house to where they can't spot me on the left. 
a little detail. I don't know if I even knew I did it, but it may have prevented me from getting uh, spotted here. And now I start searching for shots on these guys. I see they're pushing up. And really the target I'd like to hit over here is the T-100, but our motherland's actually able to take him down, which is a really good result for us. And we're able to put two shots into one in the Ferdinand and one in the ISM before our motherland goes down. Now here I contemplate it possibly going after the AT-15, but we see that's not a good result. And here we're able to spot their already fully aimed, immobile already, and it misses. Like I said, I don't understand. RNG is a fantastic thing sometimes. And sometimes it, well, it just does that to you. So. And again, this ISM, I don't know what the, I don't know what he's doing. But again, he's backwards to me and RNG just says, no, 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 no shots for you. I honestly believe if some of these shots come off, like, I don't know, at the side of a chieftain, um... This could have easily, you could have easily been looking at a 10, maybe a possibly 10,000 damage game. And I know that's kind of crazy, maybe a little hard to believe. As the Chieftain does put a shot into us, finally somebody pays attention to us. But um, I, I think it may have been possible. We'll never know because it doesn't happen. Spoiler alert. But um, yeah, just some of these shots. Some of them were partially my fault, but some of them I just felt like they just weren't. Like that when he stops and it hits his upper plate, I'm fairly certain about that. And at this point, he's kind of getting wise to us, so I'm going to reposition and not try to take another shot. Some of the rolls also weren't the best, because I was getting pointed out to in chat by uh, uh, Jack. That I was rolling for about 300 a couple times, which this gun has 390 alpha. But I think also another thing besides just the, the gun kind of trolling me, preventing from an even better game than this, is you'll see the time limit. If this has been a 15 minute game, you would have easily been another probably 2,000 damage. And you'll see why here in about 20, 30 seconds. And right, well actually less than that, sorry. We spot a full health Maltian by the bridge. Six minutes into the game. He hasn't been spotted. And yes, he is playing. So we're gonna try to take this guy out. I'm actually impressed he spots us. It may have been somebody else. That was about three, four hundred meters almost. Now I'm just trying to make sure the pro Maltian sniper doesn't hit us. I mean, that, that is a pretty good spot for a heavy tank, I think. Uh, <laughs> I can't be serious about that. But you see the time starting to wind down, and we're able to. At this point, I'm like, APCR is probably not going to go through the front of the T-10. It could, but I'm not going to risk it. So instead, I'm going to load some of the uh, heat rounds I have left. Well, I have all of them left, so. Here, I could have possibly feathered a shot, but I'm not going to risk it. Especially when we're down three tanks and we're defending. So really, all I have to do is stay alive. And I'm fairly, with all their heavies and just TDs left, I'm fairly certain I can do that. They're all pretty slow, and I can pretty much outmaneuver all of them. I believe for two minutes on nearly 1200 health. Now this guy, like I said, I was a little worried about ammo. So where normally I may have taken those shots, I'm gonna resist and make sure I actually use those remaining shots I have left on targets that I know I'm gonna hit and get a result out of that ammo. Like this AT-15 who's going down the middle of the map. Get out of the pole and feather the shot right into him and take him down. Now, I really wanted to get this T-10 out. I was really hoping Artie would just take him out so I could go and just deal with the Maltian. Now, here my thought was 152 health. There's really not any tanks left I can use these HE rounds for, so why not use them? But you see, even our HE rounds, like, they just go right in front of him. So, yeah, again, RNG is a fun thing. Now, you may argue I could also use them for the the arty which is true since he was only like i think 50 health or so but at this point i'm still not that worried about losing again only a minute 45 they really can't cap at this point and our mouse friend is still at the bridge so i'm not really worried i really uh 
that just bugs me that I wish I could have had an extra five minutes to go farm him. It would have been great. But um, right now I'm just a little worried, I guess. That I don't know. I'm really not. At this point, I'm just kind of worried about getting damage done. At this uh, this point in the match, you should uh, see the Maltian starts to push. Finally, I think he starts to actually move. We have signs of life. And we see the T75's finally got some... He's like, oh, we only got a minute left. I guess we got to do something. And I don't know what this is. I guess we're going after the Artie or something. So we're going to get some free shots into him. And bring our turtle up to about 8,000 combined. Now the T10 is able to... You know, just bounce our shot side on. Because Russia. And the power of Stalin protects him. And then this one... Yeah, it goes right under his tank. Um, I, again, that's somehow a thing. And then this one I love because he pretends to be Neo and he just stops as soon as I try leaving the shot. Probably one of the more frustrating things. I just It annoys me when that happens. And you see at this point there's 20 seconds left. And I'm just going to risk it to kill this guy. Well, if not, I'm not going to end up killing him, I don't think. No, I do. It's, I, he's the last guy we're going to take out. We're just going to pop over, RBRT him, and take him down for our fourth kill. And we're up to 6,800 damage. And we only had eight shells left, so it may have been enough to kill the Maltian. But I don't know about the other... Yeah, it would have been enough. It would have. I'd do the quick math in my head. But we don't have the time. We still get the win. Still, you know... Just short of 9,000 combined, 6,700 damage. A fantastic game in the Sheridan again. Uh, I'm really enjoying this tank. Uh, I kind of took a break from it because of the Tusk out, but I'm getting back into it, and it's probably my favorite tier 10 light. So until then, until next time, I'll catch you all later. Dilly dilly.